Hey there all, uh, out here in the garage working on my floorboards. I'm uh, just going around getting off the mill scale and stuff because uh, they were pretty black. Uh, so I hit them first with a flap wheel 40, then a 60, then an 80, and uh, got them looking halfway decent. And then I hit it with a, uh, I think this is a 120 on here now, 120. Uh, so I'm going to go up probably uh, to, uh, I think there's a 220 and then a 300 uh, to try to get some of the swirls out, get it nice and smooth, shiny, and then I'll probably go by hand uh, with some wet sandpaper, probably 1,000 grit or 2,000, something like that, to try to get it nice and smooth. That way I can put a good polish on it. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is polish it and then um, put a few coats of clear on there. Uh, and leave them like that. Uh, we'll see. I mean, worst case scenario, I hit it with sander and take the uh, the clear off. But um, I like the way they're coming out so far. Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, <laughs> so I'm, uh, I told you I was going to be doing some stuff with the rear fender, trying to uh, put some standoffs on it and put a brace for the bottom to give it some support. So you can see I'm out here kind of putzing around now. What I did is I took some uh, some scrap metal that I had laying around and uh, I used one of those little tools to, uh, to get the shape of the inside of the fender where I showed you I was going to do it. And um, once I bent it accordingly so that it would match, I had a uh, carriage bolt that I just went ahead and welded to the bottom. And what I'm going to do is put that in the fender here. I, uh, I put a rib nut in there and so this is just going to go right in there and uh, I've got it measured. It'll probably change now that I have the, the piece of metal welded on here, but this is supposed to be roughly where the, um, where the fender sits away. Uh, sorry, I'm doing this from behind. Um, where the fender sits away from the OEM fender. So this will be the support there. And then in this hole here, I'm gonna put a standoff and attach the fender. So this will be my uh, rigidity by locking it down to the fender here. And this is just gonna be support off of the OEM for the aftermarket fender sitting here against that to keep it pulled away from the bottom. I think what I might do too is either come out from here or from the bottom and bring something up to tie into the uh, behind where the license plate comes through right here just to give it some extra support down at the bottom. Um, sorry, I used to doing this with the, uh, the holders holding the phone and not in my hand. Um, so that's where I am right now and uh, we'll see how it goes when I finish up. All right, so that's what it looks like with that piece on and supporting the fender. Um, and as you can see, uh, and that's without these tightened down, that's with nothing here, that's just supported. You can see the whole back end is moving just from that being there to support the weight. Um, and these bags aren't, you know, they're not tight down. I haven't locked them in or anything. Um, I'm still just trying to get the fitment right. Uh, but that's actually exactly what I was trying to do with that piece. I think I'm gonna put some foam or uh, some, yeah, some double-sided 3M tape foam or something on the outside so that there's some padding between it and the inside of the fender. All right, I came up. All right, long. so here's how I'm gonna make my standoffs. Um, I've got this uh, large bolt or large, yeah, large bolt that's gonna go through. Um, I'm actually gonna cut the head off of this. It's basically gonna end up being threaded rod. And so this is the correct thread pattern and size for the riv nut that I put in there. I'm going to weld this washer onto this length of, um, of pipe. There we go. And then I'm going to weld this washer on the other side. Uh, so that way this will thread down into the riv nut stop up against the washer. I mean, there's really no need to put that on there, but I figure I'd have it flared out a little bit more uh, against this to go into the rivnut. Then 
the fender will sit on top of this one again welded in place there and then whatever I'm gonna put on the outside will go on that and I, I haven't decided what I'm gonna do on the outside yet I might do something decorative that'll actually thread down onto that. I, I don't know. It's going to be behind the back of the seat, so I have to do something with it because it is going to be visible. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to do for that standoff that's going to go there. I had to kind of play with the whole location. I'm not too worried about it. I can go back and fill it because the screws actually, or the bolt's actually going to go in here. And when I drilled the hole, it was here. But when I put the rivet nut in because of the curvature of the OM fender, Instead of the rivet nut being like this, it was like that, which meant that this hole wasn't going to work. So I'll work around and get everything finalized or whatever, and then I'll go back and clean that up and fill it. I have to go through and uh, fix this. I don't know if you remember from my last video because uh, I've got some issues uh, from when I put paint on it and sanded it and primered it and did something and had a reaction and all kind of stuff. So anyway, I've got to reglaze the top of the fender there anyway. So then I can go back and finish that or re or fix that because I'm not afraid of fiberglass anymore. Anyway. All right. There's I'm my, uh, standoff, uh, all made, welded up, whatnot. Um, I know it's got a lot of threads on each side, but I'd rather have too many than not enough uh, I can thread it down into the riv nut inside the fender as far as I want um, and no matter which side I have the thickness of the fender or space before the riv nut where the welds may not thread all the way in but that's fine but uh, that's gonna work as a standoff it's about an inch and a quarter long um, so that's gonna be more than adequate uh, to put under there to have that stand off of the OEM fender, but uh, be bolted down for support. Cool. Of course, I spray painted it black and immediately dropped it down into a piece of plastic with dust all over it, but <laughs> it's not going to be seen anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. But uh, that didn't come out too bad. Focus. I'll put it back over here. Yeah, that didn't come all out right, too bad. So finished uh getting that um, standoff welded up mounted up i got to figure out what i'm going to put on the top um got uh i enlarged the holes at the front changing the bolts in the front and i have that piece mounted behind the fender right about there to give it some stability again i was playing with the um the fitment of the bags and that is pretty much right on uh, i have the d chopper brackets and unfortunately it takes some tweaking to get these things to work right. And I actually have to lower the upper bracket there. I have to lower it down in order for the bags to actually sit on the bottom rail. But when I do that, it tips up the rear so it's out of line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld another small piece onto the piece of tube that's here. You can see, you can see the huge gap. I can fit my full finger in there. Um, even with the rubber uh, feet that are there that mount inside the bag, those two little nubs. Um, so I'm going to probably weld another piece of tube on top of this one um, to give support to the bag, because right now the bottom of it will move out because it's not sitting in there fully. Same thing on the other side. So I'll fix that, but that's that's pretty much the alignment I want, and uh, I think that's going to look pretty good once I get it finished up. And there is an offset there, but I'm going to get some of the um, long LED lights. I think I'm going to get 20 inch that will go all along here, and that'll fill in that gap pretty well. And um, I'll have to see how I'm going to do it. I, I might have to pull these bags backward a little bit. I'm not really sure. Um, cause I don't want the side of the lights that I put on to be so visible that it looks crazy. Uh, so we'll see, but, um, that's, that's lined up pretty good. And I'm really happy with how the, the mounting, uh, stuff that I made came out. Good stuff. What's happening everybody? Uh, Juan in the garage. I don't know why I tell you that every time you know who I am. And I think by now you all know my surroundings. <laughs> Anyway, out in the garage working. Uh, I think you guys probably saw if you watched my last Chronicles episode. Wow, 
it's cold out here, breathing out steam. Um, I finished putting my center stand on, uh, got it all together, put feet on it, and determined that I didn't like it. Uh, either way, I was going to have to shorten it because um, I made the legs longer than they need to be, and it sits probably about an inch, inch and a half too high for the look that I'm going for. So regardless, I'm going to cut those legs down a little bit shorter, and that one will actually be complete, and it'll stay exactly how it is. But I determined that I kind of wanted to try to do something different. Um, so I came out and decided to build a whole new one from scratch. No donor, uh, didn't buy one and modify it. Uh, full disclosure, this is not my idea. This is a, a, a center stand, a manual center stand that was for some Harley. I don't even remember which one, uh, but it was discontinued some time ago, apparently. Uh, and what I'm going to do is actually make it electric if I can. So here's what I'm working with right now. So what I did is I took some um, Schedule 40, I guess this is, um, one and a half ID pipe, split it down the middle. And that's because the um, frame rail is an inch and a half in diameter. Um, and what this is going to do is the... Um, the frame is going to sit in this, the frame will sit in this. And then what you just saw fall off. Ah, okay. It's all falling apart now, but this is one of the legs. I welded a piece of solid rod with a piece of angle iron to protect it. This actually goes like that. And then when it's in its stowed position or when the bike is up, this will sit back and then we'll swing down uh, in this position when the bike is lowered. And what I'm going to do is put this threaded rod in here. It's not going to thread. It's just going to be in here for support. And what I'm going to do is um, flatten one side of this, spin that around to the back put the feet on here and the legs will be adjustable. I'm not going to need it to be adjustable for me uh, because I know once I get it to the height that I want it, that's what it's going to be. Uh, but what this will make it easier for me to do is I can actually cut the legs. And if I don't get them exactly even because of differences in where the solid piece is, is uh, mounted on the, um, on the frame rail black bracket, it could be a difference of, you know, one or two millimeters or, you know, maybe a, a 16th of an inch, 32nd of an inch or something. But if I don't get these things cut exactly even, then I can play with it with the feet and get it exactly where I need it to make sure they're even. And what I'll do is I'll weld uh, a foot onto the bottom of this. This will be the crossbar that's going to go and support, um, create the rigidity. And so now you're asking, well, if this is going to wrap around the frame rail, and you'll see, or you see that it isn't straight up and down, it curves back, so the frame is actually gonna be farther over. With this down here far enough, I should be able to flex it out the, I don't know, eighth inch maybe necessary to be able to pop that around the frame. And then what I'm gonna do for starters is I'm gonna put one of the heavy duty um, exhaust uh, clamps around there to hold it onto the frame, to stress test it, and see if it's gonna function. And if it functions, I like it, and I know that's what I'm going with, I'm gonna go ahead and weld it to the frame in a couple of spots here and there so that I don't need the, uh, the clamps on there to hold those brackets in place, and uh, she will be good. Now what I'm also going to do is put something on this leg uh, that will kind of curve up and over that way, some kind of plate that'll curve up and over, because what I'm going to attempt to do, I have a couple of different actuators. This is just one. This thing is super lightweight, weighs about eight ounces, but it's pretty long. This thing's, uh, I think, six inches long, six and a half inches long uh, when it's retracted, uh, but it gives me uh, two and a half inches, I believe, of stroke on here, and I'll be able to mount this, I don't know, something like that. And then if I have that, uh, whatever it is I put to come up and swing around to the actuator, 
when that goes out, it will take this, actually that would be sitting like this. When the actuator extends, it'll push this down into the down position. Um, that's going to take some math. I'm going to have to work with that a little bit, but that's what I'm going for at present. Um, so like I said, it is not completely my design. I borrowed an idea of something that somebody made some time ago that has since discontinued it. And uh, I've modified it to work on our bike. And also what I'm doing with this, since that's mounting to the frame, it's going to kick the leg to the outside of the frame rail. So now while this will be under the bike, this is half inch. And so it is not going to sit way down below the bike, uh, not taking away any clearance. And because this is so small and so light, I can probably even extend off of this bracket and mount this actuator to this and not have to worry about finding room for it anywhere else. But, <coughs> excuse me, again, still working with that. But um, yeah, I just, I decided I wanted to try to make something completely different uh, that gave me a broader base of support for the center stand and um, that I could make electric. So we will see how it goes. I'll keep you guys up to date. All right, so I'm getting ready to get under here and uh, start prepping the area and getting some final measurements for the new center stand that I'm making. Uh, that bracket is going to go roughly here. So um, I'm going to cut this tab off from the factory horn because I'm not going to be using the horn anymore. And then on the other side, there's a little nub that sticks off the side that the, uh, the factory brake line, I believe, was hooked to. So I'm going to clean that up and get into it. All right, so I got that uh, I got that horn mounting tab cut off, and then I took my uh, zerk wheel and cleaned that surface up. So this is going to go like that, and uh, I'm going to put a big old clamp around the front of it to hold it on for the beginning until I've tested it to make sure it's going to work, and then I will go ahead and weld it to the frame down there. Uh, shouldn't take too much to weld it. It's only gonna have to keep it from oh, spreading out because uh, the weight of the bike against it is what's gonna keep it in place. So now what I have to do is measure from here across to the other side so I can cut the post that's gonna go across the bottom of the legs to uh, hold the whole thing on. Uh, getting busy getting busy continuing on uh so what you guys saw is i still had these uh, legs at a full length underneath there um, when i was measuring and i also had my crossbar longer than it needed to be uh, i went ahead and measured my distance from the inside of the leg to the inside of the leg underneath cut this to length i cut about an inch off of the legs uh, which is actually going to get me really close to where i want to be but again i'm going to have these in here to get my exact adjustment for where I want the uh, the feet to come down and then um, I will weld the whole thing together but if it turns out once I get this on that this is exactly where I need to be then I'm actually going to weld the feet directly to these legs and I'll be good to go um, so yeah I cut those down cut this down everything's all framed out uh, for me to weld here and here I'll just tack weld them for now uh, so I can put the whole thing on the bike, test fit it, make sure that it, it rotates smoothly, that these things aren't turned one way or the other ever so slightly so that it's not straight. So like I said, I'll just put a tack weld here and here on both sides to give it some stability, put it on the bike, test it, and if everything works, I'll pull it back off and weld the whole thing up and... Um, Here's something else I didn't show you guys. So when I did the video that I posted the other day, I showed you guys this motor and the size of this motor. And, you know, I was like, well, I can possibly mount that on there. It'll work. But I was waiting because I had ordered another one and that one came. Look how tiny that thing is. Yeah. And uh, it's still got a 50 millimeter stroke 
and a uh, a 90 uh, newton meter uh, or 90 newton um, load capacity. It's only got to push that thing around and down or push the feet down. It doesn't have to hold them. The weight of the bike on the legs is what holds them down. This thing just needs to push them out and, and bring them back. Um, so yeah, man, this thing, that thing is so small. Uh, and as long as it can push the weight, no problem. This is what I'm going to mount up. And as long as I can get it to work right, because I will have to create something to be, this will be the fulcrum point. There's something that's going to have to arc off of this and connect to the leg so that as this extends, it actually rotates that leg down. Um, so I've got to pull in some trigonometry, I think, to uh, <laughs> get those angles and, and see how I'm going to get that to work. But uh, yeah, look at the difference in size between those two, just to give you an idea. I mean, this thing is, like I said, uh, six and a half, eight inches, something like that uh, from tip to tip when it's fully retracted. And this thing is roughly, what was that, one, two, three, four and a half inches. Each one of my joints I count as an inch. So yeah, like four and a half inches. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, I'm excited now. Really excited about getting this thing together. But uh, it's ice cream o'clock. So I'm going to go inside. My wifey and I are going to have some uh, ice cream and look at some TV. And I'm off tomorrow and Friday. So I'm going to come out here first thing in the morning and start working on this. All right. Keep it going. Got them all tacked up. Uh, I'm going to go under a test fit. What I did in the video yesterday is I'm going to move this forward so I can move the entire center stand forward under the frame. And I had to cut this section out because the mount for the stock kickstand is there. Uh, the Not the mount for the kickstand, but the, the bump stop for the kickstand is there. So I had to uh, cut that out so I could wrap around that. Uh, so I'm getting ready to get under and try to uh, to do a first test fit of this and see what modifications need to do from there. All right, my first test fit on here. Uh, I've got it mocked up um, and it swings great. I can have, well, it's going to depend on where the, um, when I put the electric actuator on there, where the uh, stroke ends. It can go straight down or it can go forward. It'll rest against the angle iron here. That'll be the support for the stop at that angle, which is fine. Uh, but if the throw of the, or if the stroke of the uh, actuator ends with it straight up and down, which, you know, you see obviously there's an angle to the frame uh, straight up and down, that will work too. Now, um, I'm going to cut the crossbar off and lower it. I raised it up just for aesthetics, thinking, okay, I don't want it going all the way down there by the feet. But because of where it is, and because this goes to the outside of the frame rails, it sits pretty low below the frame. And it's not going to cause a problem. I'm not going to hit it or feet or anything going over speed bumps. Uh, but I'd actually rather it be setting up a little bit higher. So what I'm going to do is cut the crossbar off and lower it down uh, to as low as I can take it on this piece of steel, the feet will be down here obviously, but I'll drop this down down here somewhere so that once it's up, it will sit closer to the frame. Now at this point, I could actually just weld a tab on that side at the top and onto the mounting uh, bracket on the other side and put a uh, side stand lever out here and make this manual and I would really, I'd be done. Um, but since I want to make this electric, I'm going to figure a way to uh, mount that electric actuator up here. And then I'll have to put something off of this leg for the actuator to connect to, to actually rotate it down. Uh, but for the first mock-up of it, I like it. I did not drop it down onto the stand, uh, only because this was just a test and this is only tacked on. Um, I doubt that it would break off if I lowered the weight of the bike on it. Um, but I already know that I'm going to take this off and lower it. So I'm not going to even bother doing that just yet. I'm going to go ahead and just remove it, move the bar, put it back on. Um, and then I will check it. Again. All right. Well, like I've said from the very beginning, the bloopers stay in. <laughs> um, 
I had this all fitted up. I tacked it and it fit and it worked. All I did was move this leg down so that when the kickstand came up, it wouldn't drop so far below the frame. So I went ahead, cleaned up, took off those tacks, and then I made the mistake of uh, augering out the edges here, uh, just like using a tubing notcher, so that it would weld better up against these pipes. What I didn't take into consideration is that the distance between the inside of this is supposed to be 10 and 3 quarter inches. And when I did it before, it was 10 and 3 quarter inches. But as soon as I augered this out, it actually pulled these in slightly. So now the distance between here is 10 and 5 eighths, which means that now the mounts are going to be too close and it is never going to get around the frame rail onto the bike. So <laughs> I need to cut this out, clean up the sides of the legs, cut another piece of this and do it all over again. But hey, that's fabrication, right? <laughs> all right, so I cut myself another one. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it right now. This time I used my tubing notcher and actually notched that out, went and measured. So my distance from the inside to the inside is uh, 10 and 7 eighths, uh, which should give me exactly what I need and possibly just a 16th or maybe even a 32nd more. And that should, uh, that should be exactly where I need it to be. All right, going to weld it up and see what happens. Worst case scenario, I got to make an entirely new one. <laughs> uh, hopefully it goes better than that, though. We'll see. All right, that didn't come out too bad. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and try to mount it up, see what it looks like. Uh, it'll be coming on and off a few times anyway, because I've got to work with it for its fit. Then I got to see about mounting the, uh, the actuator to it. And then when all that's done, still got to take it off, powder coat it. But uh, weld it up halfway decent. I'll clean the welds up a little bit more too. All right, got it mounted up. Swings perfectly smooth. Like I said, I could put a spring on the other side and put a, a rod here and make this manual. And literally, I could be done with this thing in probably another hour or two of work. Put the feet on, put a spring on, put a kick on. But, like I said, I'm trying to make this thing electric. Um, in moving that crossbar all the way down, now that's as far as it drops under the bike. So, about three quarters of an inch to an inch. But again, that's I, I'm not going to have any clearance issues with that. That's going to be tucked up pretty nice. That's not going to come even anywhere close going over a speed bump. And of course, the bike's going to be lifted um, when going down the road anyway. So uh, now I'll see if I'm going to work on this anymore tonight. But I need to um, get my height right for my feet and figure out how I'm going to put this actuator on there. And if I can get that actuator mounted up okay. Oh, that's right. I have to put something coming off this leg for the actuator to attach to. It's going to be something that's going to kind of come this way and curve down. That way, as the actuator extends, it pushes this down. So, uh, let me break out some paper and start drawing stuff up. All right. So, um, this is only zip-tied on the, uh, the mount for the kickstand bump stop here. But that's roughly where I'll probably have this thing mounted. And so now it's a question of, I need to make something that's going to come from here and connect to the tip of the actuator so that as the actuator extends, it drops this down. Uh, I just had one of the little welding coupons that are coupons that um, you practice on kind of cut one out, but it's nowhere near the right size. Um, but it'll give me an idea where to work with. I just kind of zip tied this thing on right now. Next thing to do, I need to go ahead and put the controller onto the wires and run it in and out so I know exactly how far out it's coming. This one has a 50 millimeter throw or stroke. So it comes out 50 millimeters. Um, and so what I need to do is find out exactly where that's gonna stop the kickstand on the limit switch. 
uh, for shits and giggles, I just ordered uh, one with a 30 millimeter stroke in case, you know, the 60 millimeters takes it to, or excuse me, 50 millimeters takes it to here and 30 millimeters takes it to here, then I'll probably go with this. Um, but that's where I am now. I think I'm done for the evening and I'll do this again some more tomorrow. I need to take all this stock horn stuff out of here. But moving right along, man, making progress, making progress. I might actually sit it down on these legs overnight and stress test it like that and see what it does. Because if I come out tomorrow and it's sitting on the floor, <laughs> no, I'll put this block of wood somewhere up farther toward the front uh, to keep that from being an issue. But yeah, I might sit it on the sit it on the legs tonight. Oh, actually, no, I can't because I intentionally cut those short so I can put my feet longer. And if I drop it all the way down, my bag's going to be dragging the ground. And I don't feel like taking those off tonight. So I'll see what I'll do tomorrow. Signing off. Hey, y'all, forgive me for being on the floor. I need to change the uh, front wheel on this thing back to the stock front wheel in order to be able to put it up on my lift because it's just <laughs> it's just too long with the uh, with the uh, 26 on there. At least I think it is. I haven't really given it a hard shot, but um, it'll be easier if I put the thing on the lift. But I think that'll be easier if I put the stock wheel back on. Anyway, I'm under here messing with the electric motor on the center stand. And I want to uh, show you guys what it looks like. I'm still messing with it. Still got some work to do, but I uh, just wanted to show all you All right, so I the am. first thing you'll notice is that it's not all the way up where it needs to be. I'm still working on this piece right here to get the right length, the right angle, where the, where the, the rod should be connected in here in order to be able to use the full uh, stroke of the shock to have it all the way up and then down where I want it. But uh, I'll give you... Uh, a preview of what it looks like or show you what it looks like right now uh, I haven't hooked my control module up to it yet so I'm just doing wires on a battery so stand by come on boom that's down and So that's what it looks like right now. Uh, again, I'm just kind of putzing around with this part to, to get it right. Uh, and then also adjusting where exactly the servo, uh, excuse me, where the, um, oh my God, the actuator is going to be. Uh, don't mind all this. Just, it's just mounted up with zip ties temporarily because I know I'm moving around with it quite a bit. Uh, but that's where it is right now. I'll do it one more time just for fun. Just for funsies. Come on. And back up. Come on. So... I mean, I might even have to get a uh, an actuator with a longer stroke. I'm not really sure. This one's only 50 millimeters. I actually ordered another one with 30 in case I have to try to do it another way. Uh, but I might, might need one with a 100 millimeter stroke. Uh, and then I can mount it farther back. Uh, and then it'll be all the way up where it needs to be. And then go all the way down here as well. I mean, they're like 20 bucks. So that that's pretty easy to do. Anyway, that's where we are right now.